Hi! Welcome to episode 38 of The Corner of Knit and Tea. My name is Laura. I'm also known as Fluffy K on Ravelry, Fluffy Kira on Instagram and Twitter. I blog, and this episode's show notes will be over at thecornerofknitandtea.com. We have a Ravelry group called The Corner of Knit and Tea, and I have an Etsy shop called The Stash Buckler Adventures in Yarn, where I sell my hand spun yarn. Welcome. It is Sunday, May 2nd, and the weather is a little bit frenetic outside. We have had sort of alternating between rain and wind throughout the day, um, but it is in the 70s, so we are starting with um, our Midwest sort of spring through fall, uh, thunderstorms and um, warm temperatures weather. Um, and so it's been kind of, we, we ducked out to get a few things done, and now we're home for most of the afternoon, and I'm mostly doing chores. Um, but this week has been a pretty good week. Yesterday we went out and walked the trails um, of some parks nearby, and actually I got my first 10,000 step day. So that was very exciting, and um, I exercised most of the days this week, so I've been doing pretty well on staying active. And... Um, I guess that's kind of it. Um, we are having a quiet weekend ahead of a few busy weekends, um, so we were just kind of taking the opportunity to enjoy. So I will get right into the podcast. Um, my husband jokingly told me that based on what I'm about to do, I was going to lose subscribers. Um, we just got back from running errands in the market, and we stopped at Starbucks, and I actually got an iced vanilla latte, and he is laughing that I am drinking my iced vanilla latte while recording The Corner of Knit and Tea. He said, oh, nobody's going to subscribe to you now. What are you doing? But um, I am drinking my iced vanilla a lot day from Starbucks today and thought it was silly when I had an ice cold drink waiting there to um, brew up something new. So this week I'm going to cheat and have coffee, but I'll be back to tea next week for you. This is one of my favorite kind of summer drinks from them. I don't do a lot of coffee, um, but I recently found actually that the espresso drinks are easier on my stomach than the actual coffee drinks. So getting a, an iced latte actually works a lot better and doesn't make me feel as ill. So um, my husband is the one who has serious Starbucks cravings. He um, loves their mocha frappuccinos to no end. So usually when we go, it's for him, and then I kind of think about what I want to get. Um, and I used to be big into their Tazo iced teas, but the recipes have changed a little bit, um, and they don't taste quite the same to me anymore, so I haven't been as into that lately, which is why I've been getting the lattes. So I will digress back to tea next week, but that's what I'm drinking this week, which brings me to what I am wearing, which is also a finished object for this week. I finished my Krita cardigan. I'll try and give you a little bit. It is... Um, Krita from uh, Nitty. It is a pattern by Yarn Madness, and I particularly like the detailing on the back where they meet in the back. Um, the lace pattern starts on the front and um, diagonals down and to the sides and meets in the back, and then it's got a nice lace detailing on the sleeves, which I chose to do about three-quarter lengths. And then um, I found a dealer on Etsy who does these great um, clasps. I decided I didn't want to do buttons. I wanted to do a clasp, so I found the clasp and sewed that on last night. And that is now done, and it's a great, um, I think it will be a great sweater for the air conditioning indoors, and at work and I plan to actually wear it just like I am today which is with a tank top underneath for the warm weather and um, then just a nice cardigan for work to keep my uh, arms covered so I don't get too chilly. So that is finished, which I'm very excited about because I am chomping at the bit to cast on some new projects which I'll be showing you in a minute. The other thing that I finished this week are my socks. So I showed you the first one that was done last week, and I finished the mate this week. They are um, fraternal. They are hand spun, though not my hand spun. These were spun by The Lime Juicy. She does have a shop on Etsy, although I don't know how much spinning she's doing these days. Um, these were my standard top sock recipe, um, which is a rounded toe, and then um, straight through the foot, a fish lips kiss heel, 
then some calf shaping up to about an inch and a half of uh, two by two ribbing. Um, both socks are roughly the same. Um, normally I work on 56 stitches because this was a little closer to um, to sport weight, I ended up doing 52 stitches, um, and I absolutely love them, although they are way, 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 way too warm to be wearing now, so they will not get um, the appropriate love until next uh, next fall when it starts to get chilly. I can't wait to wear them, and I love, love, love the colorway. It is two if by hand um, flowers and football tops, so I am calling this flowers and football socks, and they are done and in the book and I'm still figuring out which way to I'm voguing here. So socks completed and done. And so other than the pie shawl that leaves me with nothing on my needles which means I can cast on which I have been dying to do. I wound up yarn for two new projects last night and I plan to actually cast both of them on this afternoon slash evening. The first is in my homespun house um, a llama or alpaca bag which I absolutely love um, and this is a cute little top um, for I have a cousin who is having a baby this is called the chicory top um, by whistling girl knits who is Sarah Pope it was a freebie pattern um, on Ravelry and I only have it printed out um, in black and white so you won't get to see the colors but it is a cute little top um, it is kind of reverse stockinette and then it's got I don't know if you can see like the little um, flower detailing up one side um, and I thought that would be just a super cute uh, top for a summer baby. The baby's due in July in California. Um, this is a free pattern on Ravelry, so I don't mind sort of showing it to you. Um, and I have not cast on yet, but I am going to use, I have a ball of, this is Unwind Yarn Company Journey Sock. Um, which is 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon, and um, it is in the colorway I Want It Now, which actually is not registering true. Um, today the lighting is kind of weird because of the storming out. It is um, white and it's got blues and purples and a little shot of pink, um, and it's very violet, um, a la Violet Beauregard from Charlie and the Chocolate. Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, I can speak today, um, which is how it got its name. I want it now. So um, sadly, the camera is not doing it justice. I will try and take some good photos for Instagram so you can see it's really, really a gorgeous yarn, and I think it will be beautiful in that little baby top. So I am excited to cast that on. That will be this evening's cast on um, and a project to work on during my lunches this week because it's little and portable. So that is cast on number one. I hope to have progress to show you next week. The second one is something that I have been dying to knit for a while and only just got the perfect yarn for it. It is um, in my Ravelry bag, A Daily Dose of Fiber, and I love this bag. Um, and that is the Almus shawl designed by Kirsten Kapoor. And let me see if I have a better, I don't have a full picture. Um, I have part of a picture. It is a two color shawl um, and you do two color sort of striping with some slip stitches. And then there's a lacy border. This is a paid for pattern. I believe it is $6 on Ravelry. Um, and Kirsten has just released a new um, shawl book with kind of the best of her shawls. So um, I know it is in there as well. So if you're interested in more of her shawls, I might suggest the shawl book um, because there are tons in there that will be good for knitting. And um, one of the reasons I decided that I absolutely had to knit this shawl is because I just recently purchased this yarn, which as you can see is kind of cream and then it's speckled. It's got pink and brown and a little bit of blue. This is Hedgehog Fibers. And it is her twist sock, which is 80% BFL, 20% nylon. And um, this is in the colorway teacup, which is perfect for me. I, I just knew when I saw it, not only was it super, super pretty, but I knew I had to have it because it was the teacup colorway. And what else would be more perfect? Ignore that I'm drinking coffee today. <laughs> 
So um, I wanted to use this, which like I said is cream and it's got little bits of pink and brown and blue in it. And I thought I had the perfect um, yarn in my stash and I do. This is from Color Pearl um, Natural Dyed Yarn in Cochineal Deep Cherry. Um, so I'm not exactly sure what she used to dye it. It is a superwash merino cashmere nylon. This is a yarn that I purchased when I was in Virginia Beach a few years ago. It is tourist yarn. So, and I just really, really, really liked the way these two looked side by side. So I am planning to um, knit the medium size um, and I'm hoping that I can get away with it. Both balls are 400 yards, um, and the largest size calls for two balls of 440 yards, so I'm hoping I can do the medium. I'll probably go pretty much as far as I can. I will use up all this color because this is going to be the contrast color and the lace, um, and this is going to be the, um, the second color. So those are um, the two balls of yarn that I am using for Ulmus, and that is going to be a cast on this afternoon, um, and I am super excited about this one. Uh, this one I will also be using to enter a number of um, shawl knit-alongs. Um, I'm hoping to knit along with uh, Kate of the Stitch Addiction podcast. She's doing a May and June shawl knit-along. Um, Schnuffeltier, who's Tracy from the Passionate Spinner podcast, is doing a shawl knit-along hers was April and May so I'm hoping that I can squeak mine in for May. Um, I, I'm i hoping to finish this one in May um, both for the Harry Potter cup and because I have a million other shawls that I want to knit um, so it won't be eligible for um, the Suburban Stitcher podcast is doing um, I think she's calling it uh, Round Your Neck which is knit something that can be worn around your neck. Um, but I plan to enter shawls in that, but I think that one doesn't start till June 1st. Um, the other one that I am going to enter the shawl in um, is I want to join uh, the Knit Girls Stash Dash for the summer, and I am going to be ambitious and go for a 10K um, and hope to use 10,000 yards of yarn um, out of my stash this summer. Um, and so that goes, I think, between May 22nd and then right around Labor Day. It generally runs um, Laura around Laura Lala's um, school schedule. So I am trying to knit along with a whole bunch of knit alongs this summer. I'm hoping it will um, keep me motivated and um, maybe even a chance for some prizes. Which actually brings me to um, one of the points that I want to talk about with the uh, Corner of Knit and Tea group. I had said that there would be a May knit along and here it is May 2nd and I am sort of behind the times, but I was thinking that it might be fun to do a May, June, I wanted to call it spring into summer. Um, and my thought was that anything would be eligible as long as you could make a case that it was kind of springy or summery. So that could be either colors, that could be um, small projects like socks, um, it could be lacy for summer, it could be in cotton if you want to knit a cotton top or something kind of for summer. Um, you know that when I run my knit alongs, I usually like to make them as open as possible so that everyone can sort of enter whatever they're working on. Um, so I, like I said, just in some way justify that it's kind of summery and then you can enter it. Um, if you've already started a project, that's fine. Um, I'm fine with whips um, if you want to finish them. Uh, I would just say if you have something that just needs the ends woven in or like two more rows, those, please don't count that because um, I want at least a portion of the work to be done in May and June. I will open those threads um, today and I will leave those open through the end of June and there will be prizes. I already know that I have one skein of yarn um, that I really uh, like that I had sort of purchased with an eye towards a giveaway and um, I'm sure there will be at least one other prize although I'm not sure what it will be. So I'm going to call that spring into summer and look for more details in the Ravelry group if you are interested in participating. And I'm sorry I didn't get that kicked off at May 1st, but we'll go with May 2nd. Or actually, today is Sunday, May 3rd. I am so far off on my dates, and I was wrong on the date last week, too. Okay, we're starting it today, May 3rd. I'm going to go right to the Ravelry group and do that as soon as I am done filming. 
So after all of that knitting and knit alongs, um, and truthfully for the knit along, it can also be crochet, it can be weaving. Um, if it is sort of a Ravelry craft, please feel free to enter it. Um, I always say knit along because I am by default a knitter, but I realize that sounds like I'm excluding other crafts. I am not. Please submit anything that you think is springy or summery. So let's move on to spinning. Last week I showed you a braid from Southern Cross Fiber. It was a Romney braid, um, which I said I had not spun Romney before. Um, and it was called Heart of Winter, I believe. I'll have to look at that again. And I did finish that and it came out beautifully. Uh, this reminds me, honestly, of um, all the stone fruits of summer. There's um, really a beautiful plum, there's uh, different shades of peach. There's kind of a red, kind of cherry, raspberry. There's a really dark purple, um, which kind of reminds me of black plums. There's like a really kind of light lavender bit. That's actually a pretty good color representation. It's a little bit um, dark, but yeah. So that is, um, like I said, this is Heart of Winter. Romney is um, a fairly uh, coarse wool. It's a longer stapled wool. So I think this would be, while this is not super, super rough, it is certainly not super soft next to the skin. Um, I think it would be good either for mittens or I think it would be really nice socks. I suspect it's about a sport weight, maybe a DK. Um, I'm thinking it's probably in the neighborhood of about 280 yards, so you could get a nice pair of sport weight socks or um, a pair of mittens out of it. And um, this one is destined for the shop, so it will be up there shortly. Um, and I will be taking uh, better photos, better color photos on Instagram this afternoon. So um, that is Heart of Winter, Southern Cross Fiber Romney. Which brings me to what I'm going to spin this week. Um, I don't know how many of you uh, follow me on Instagram, but I, and I don't know if you know um, Navi Sama, who is Navi Knits on Etsy, and he sells a variety of things, including silk scarves. I wore one of his silk scarves on one of the early podcasts. Um, he also hand dyes yarn and fiber and blends bats. And a while ago, he blended some beautiful bats and donated them to uh, Kim and Sam over at Come Knit With Us. And on their one year uh, podcast anniversary, they gave away the bats um, as a prize and I won them. And they are beautiful bats. They are turquoise and gray with some sparkle. It looks like there's definitely some Angelina in here and some white and a little bit of black and they are just gorgeous. There's some gray on the inside, kind of a kidney gray. It's really hard to tell. My monitor doesn't seem to handle um, blues very well. Anyway, these are beautiful bats. I'm guessing they're close to four ounces. I'm not exactly sure, um, but I am going to spin these up this week because I'm super excited to do that. And then actually these will be part of a giveaway in my group. Um, so you'll need to tune in next week um, to see the finished yarn that I spin and then hear more about the giveaway. But I thought since these had started out with Navi Knits and they had gone to the girls at Come Knit With Us and now they're coming to visit at the corner of Knit and Tea, I thought it would be great if they could continue on their way in the world. Um, so they will be part of a giveaway. Um, I, please tune in next week and I will give you all the details about that on how to win it and you'll be able to see the yarn that you'll be winning. That's actually why I decided to delay it a week. Um, but that is what's coming up this week in spinning and next week um, on the podcast. So that brings me almost to the end of the podcast. I did have one question in the Ask Me Anything thread that is over in the Ravelry group. And hold on just a moment. Let me pull that up so that I can tell you what it says. It is from Knitter's Home who is, let me see, Caitlin in Washington. And she said, I was wondering how you do your rounded toe. My toes are not pointy and it is very hard to make them fit. So Caitlin, um, I borrow the toe from David Schultz's Toe Up Sock Recipe. 
uh, sorry, sock cookbook. It is a free pattern on Ravelry, and actually it is part of the reason that it is such a great pattern is that it gives you all kinds of ways. Basically, you knit a gauge swatch with your sock yarn, and it tells you, it has you do some calculations and figure out exactly how to knit the perfect sock for your foot at that gauge. Um, and this is super wonderful when you're not knitting with regular sock yarns, when you're knitting with hand spun, and you don't know exactly what the gauge is going to be, um, he gives you all the mechanics to calculate out so that you have a perfect sock every single time. However, um, I will show you on my sock, my rounded toe, and kind of tell you the basics because you may be able to do it without his recipe. Um, the reason, the way he achieves the very rounded toe as opposed to the pointy toe that many patterns um, are, and this is this is specifically for a toe up sock. However, um, I don't see why it wouldn't work if you were going top down, although there is a caveat, which I'll speak about in just a moment. The way you do the rounded toe is you cast on the normal number of stitches you would cast on for a toe up sock. In my case, I use Judy's Magic Cast On and I cast on 24 stitches. Um, that is six stitches on each needle. Um, normally I go up to 56 stitches, which is 14 stitches per needle. So I'm starting with six stitches on each needle and I need to get up to 14 stitches per needle for the sock. What I do, and that is, um, if you count, 16, 6 to 14 is 8. So I'm going to have 8 increase rounds, um, and that counts for all 4 needles to get me from 24 to 56. Because I'm going to have 8 increase rounds, I take that and I divide it in half. The first four increase rounds, I knit right away and I don't put a resting round in between them. So the first four rounds, I am increasing right away on the toe. So immediately I'm going from six stitches to 10 stitches. Then for the second four sets of increase, for the second set of increases, the remaining four, then I knit every other round. So then I go from 10 to 14, but it takes me eight rounds to get there as opposed to just four rounds. Does that make sense? You can apply it to pretty much anything if you knit a 60 sit. 60 stitch sock and you cast on, let's say you're 12, so you're going 6 to 15. That is going to be nine rounds. Um, usually what I would do is I would do four or five rounds of every round and then another four or five of every other round. So that's generally how I achieve the rounded toe. If that didn't make sense, I would encourage you to go read, um, like I said, it's David's so Toe, blah, 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 blah. David's Toe Up Sock Cookbook. It is by David Schultz. It is a free pattern on Ravelry. Um, like I said, that's where I learned to do that toe. Um, I believe, like I said, it is a toe up pattern. However, I believe you could duplicate the rounded toe going top down. However, um, if you, because going, when you go top down into your toe, you're doing decreases. Um, and usually they have you do the decreases every other round. I believe that you could convert the pattern to a more rounded toe by doing half of your decreases every other round and half of your decreases every round. However, this will make the length of your toe a little bit shorter because you won't have as many rounds over the course of the toe. So if that's the case, I would encourage you to knit your foot um, maybe about a half an inch to an inch longer than you would normally knit um, so that uh, when you decrease the toe faster, it won't result in a shorter sock for you, if that makes sense. So Caitlin, I hope that kind of answered your question. If you have further questions, please let me know or check out um, David Schultz's pattern. Um, and I hope that that will help you achieve a better rounded toe that you like the fit of. So that is all I have for you this week, or a few minutes shorter than we have been in recent weeks. I hope that you have had a wonderful week, and um, I hope that this week you have a wonderful time. Um, until we speak again, I say happy knitting, happy spinning, happy sipping tea or coffee, and I'll see you next time. Bye.